I guess I will make this an overtime video. I'll I'll cut there and yeah, because this this is a tale. <laughs> We were both there. This is a tale. You guys wanted to hear about this. You got curious. And it is a good story, so we'll tell you. Once upon a time. When was this? 2003? Five? 2005? It's Nucron, so... Yeah, 2005. Yeah, it was 2005. Yeah. Um, this was uh, long, long ago. There was a hotel in Chicago. Which no longer exists. Doesn't exist anymore. At the time, it was... How many hands did it go through? It was like a Hilton, and then it was like... I don't know. By the time we got there, it was just called The, the Purple, Purple Hotel. Hotel. That was the name. No chain. The Purple Hotel. The Purple Hotel. Shame in your fucking clue. We, now, Tara and I are both part of a group <laughs> called uh, the Camarilla. It's White Wolf's fan club. Uh, not, and they, not anymore. Well, yeah, well... Well, we're not fans of White Wolf anymore? We're not the official fan club anymore. Well, they don't that have an official fan Grand club Mastery. anymore. But, uh, details, details, details. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're remembered, and uh, it's games like Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, all the World of Darkness games they make, and uh, we played in the Global LARP. Now, the, the really cool thing about this was every city had their own local game, but they all were part of the same Global Chronicle. So shit that happened in Seattle, well, it was in the same, you know, same uh, chronology as what was going on in Atlanta and all these other other cities. And we got together at conventions, all playing the same characters from the same group. It was all together. It was coordinated. Different uh, different cities. We had a, a master storyteller in different regions. It was it's really cool. We still have those things. Yeah. And. <laughs> And uh, the game, uh, ha we have big uh, Chronicle games uh, where we all get together in the same city. And this one was set up while the hotel, the, the region, the south, the north central region, I think. That was what Illinois is. North central? Sure. Yeah, I think it's north central or it's south or east central. Whichever what region, yeah. Great Lakes, Great Lakes region. They set up, they talked to the hotel, the regional uh, officials got together, worked it out with the hotel to have this regional event. At the time they did, it was still a Hilton. Okay. Oh, that I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is a Hilton. <laughs> they're a reputable chain. We'll deal with them. But between the time the contract was made... And the eight months. I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. My computer started auto. Somebody something. made a stinky. <laughs> the fuck was that? That was an auto played video of a baby shitting in a pool. Yeah. Thanks for that, computer. <laughs> what the hell? Stop clicking on things. <laughs> I didn't. I. Stop sorry. clicking things. Right now. So where was I? Ghetto Con. Between the eight months when the contract was made and when the convention was actually had, the hotel changed hands twice. It went from... No, well, changed hands... Well, three times, I guess. It went from being a Hilton to being another chain to being simply... The, the Purple, purple Hotel. To give you an idea, people in the hotel who worked at the hotel lived in the hotel. And there was this wing of people in the hotel who were like running storefronts. Yeah, they were like running businesses out of their, rooms. their hotel rooms and shit. They were like cutting hair and selling yeah. records. It was like an Iraqi strip mall. <laughs> so... Down one hallway. Story. I knew people that arrived and found that the sheets in the room were had were blood stained. Right. I knew someone who found like a broken crack pipe in his room. Uh hash. Someone, someone that found, yeah, like a bunch of pop paraphernalia in their room yeah. that had just never gotten cleaned up. This was check in day. This is day one. Yeah, I remember uh to give you my perspective on it. You remember Debutel? 
I, I, did she die? I know. No, no, her. Yeah, you know, you know, Dee. <laughs> um, I drove from Savannah, Georgia to Chicago. Straight drive to get to the convention. I was very tired by the time I, ar- I arrived. Um, I got out of my vehicle. I walked up to the front door. And there's D, and I'm like, oh, here's someone I know. Hi, D, how you doing? And the first words out of D's mouth was, we found crack pipes and blood in the room. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have heard that right. I must be sleep deaf. So I said, what? No, oh, we found crack pipes. You remember Four Rooms, that movie, Four Rooms? I didn't see it. There's this one scene. There's a dead whore in the mattress. That's what if I. If there was thinking. a dead hooker to be found in a mattress, it was at this hotel. If there was a live hooker to be found living in your mattress, it was at this hotel. We got like. So I was I was the regional coordinator at the time, which mm-hmm. means that I was in charge of making sure my region didn't act like. You were the out of case. We have storytellers who handle the in-character... They're the dungeon masters for the in-character side. And then we have coordinators who handle arranging play spaces. Basically, like and, the, the club den mothers. Yeah, you handle the out-of-character side of shit. Well, I was the regional coordinator at the time. So, so this is like my four first, or five first, states you handle. Yeah, this was my first convention as a regional... So I had to spend a whole night being on duty. And this hotel was so fucked up that they were like, we're not leaving a girl on duty by herself all night. No. When she's never been on duty before. So they like, they, they, they t- tagged in Ricky Kramer and they were like, you're, you're just going to help her. So if anybody dies, like she's not on her own. Um, we had like, then there was Saturday night. Do you remember the pimps and hose ball? Yes. Yeah. See what Literally. happened was, um, <laughs> the Purple Hotel had made an arrangement because there was an entirely different club that made use of the Purple yeah. Hotel on a regular basis. Um, prostitutes and their their managers. Oh, shizzle. Every weekend, they would have their own little convention. This place was known for it. Like every Saturday night, if you wanted a working girl, you went down to the Purple Hotel. We and were the- we were not aware of this. And the room they had, in order to get from our space where the games were to the place, part of the hotel where the rooms were, you had to pass the room they were using. So picture, like, 500 nerds. Who dress in goth attire. Who are all dressed up for games, and some girls... Vampire games. Wear, some girls don't wear a lot, so we had a lot of girls get propositioned. Because some girls for LARP don't wear a ton, you know? Yeah. So we had a lot of girls getting proposition. People thought they were working. So it got to the point where, like, the, the coordinators running the con were like, no woman walks un- unaccompanied. Like, if you see a girl and she's alone, it doesn't matter if you know her or not. Like, be within three f- feet of her at all times until she gets to her room. And there was some crossing <laughs> of streams there where we didn't know who was in the game. And who was not in the game? Well, and there was one point, I was, that night, I was all, like, garbed out in a Victorian gown, which I will show you guys what I look like. That's not from that com, but it's the same dress. Yeah. And I'm walking down the hall with a guy I know, new, and this dude, like, high as a kite, baked out of his mind, kind of stumbles out of somewhere and stops and stares at me, and I'm like, oh, here we go. It begins... And uh, he's like, you look like that girl from that movie. This happens to be a lot of cons, apparently. Sometimes a band camp girl, you know, because nobody looks past the hair when you're a redhead. You just look like whatever redhead is famous at the time. Mm-hmm. These days I look like Deborah Messing, apparently. <laughs> so it, finally he worked out who I look like, and I look just like Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge, apparently. I did not. Ob- you could, uh, No. But whatever, this guy was baked out of his mind. I was about to say, no. And I'm like, okay, well, thank you. And try to sort of move past him. And no, and he's like, no, you do. You look just like her. And I'm like, and? That's great. Awesome. 
And, now you know, what? Eventually, you know, the, the, guy, the guy I was with kind of maneuvered us away, and yeah, I didn't we're... have to deal with negotiating prices with that guy or anything. I he don't... didn't have anywhere <laughs> to go. He, they, he'd reached an Im- you'd reached an impasse because he'd played his trump card. Yeah. You look like this person. No place to climb with that one. Yeah. So that was my, like... And after that, I just, like, jetted to my room. I was like, I... Like, but I can't... It gets, really. it gets better. Because um, we had representatives, actually, from White Wolf Games at the event. And we had the national club director at the event. And then came the drive-by. Yes, the drive-by! In which someone attempted... I don't know if they were aiming at our people, or just near our people, but But there was a firefight. Very, very close to very outside, to right outside the hotel, and I was in a room in a meeting with windows right out onto the front of the hotel and um yeah all of a sudden we hear the come back come back come back come back and this is how much of a girl tara is everyone starts panicking and like hitting the deck and i'm from the hood so i'm like well that was gunshots that's not good <laughs> but i'm like all right we gotta we gotta change rooms and everyone's like yeah oh my god i don't want you know we gotta change rooms i don't want to get shot and i'm like well we gotta change rooms because i had this dress custom made <laughs> And I'm not getting any of your old blood on it. <laughs> so, we're leaving. Do you know how hard it is to get geek blood out of this material? I mean, Right? It's taffeta. God. So, yeah, and then later on I realized, I was like, wow, okay, that I probably should have been more worried about actually getting shot. Yeah, a little bit. Than getting my pretty dress blood on, but I'm a girl. And I'm from the hood. And so, you know. It's just like, ain't nobody dying on my custom-made dress, goddammit. Yeah, but it was this weird thing where every crazy thing that happened just kind of added to the experience. And And there was more than one occasion where you could hear gunshots outside the hotel. That was just the closest. It was like... Like, I was walking through the lobby, and the current club director was sitting right in front of the windows, and he jumped, like, right out of his chair because there were gunshots. Beirut had nothing on this. It was... And, you know, it, it got to this point where it's eventually the we incorporated the insanity and just sort of started rolling with it. So by the end of the weekend, and here's here was the cherry on the, the Sunday of awful. So we bailed pretty early on Sunday because we went to the zoo and saw the hippos. Sunday morning, guess who came rolling up into the hotel? The Red Hats. Oh, that's right! I did see them! The old lady gang! Who? What is this red hat thing, anyway? I'm not entirely sure. It's an old lady is. gang, basically. It's, yeah, it's the old lady gang. Because they roll into restaurants, like, 50 deep, and are total assholes to everybody, because they're like, fuck you, we're old! We're wearing purple dresses and red hats and shit. So, and- the night before, we'd had hotel full of pimps and whores, and then Sunday morning, old ladies! It was just all kinds of crazy. And they were everywhere. It was creepy. I think we were more creeped out by the Red Hat ladies than the Red Hat ladies were creeped out by us. Yeah. Because they were just like... We we were just watching them with like... There's something wrong with them. This is a bunch of vampire LARPers looking at these people going, There's something wrong with those people. Yeah. Yeah, that con was pretty... So that that was Ghetto Con. The con where you took, you know, a bunch of nerds from all over the country and exposed them to the fucking hood. Best, worst... Crash course in the hood. Like, weekend boot camp of the fucking hood. And that hotel no longer exists. And that place got leveled a few years later and Mm -hmm. good fucking riddance to bad garbage because holy crap... Because, you know, I, I, when you get to the point that you're just leaving blood stains on the sheets, why are you in the well, hotel Also, people business? didn't know, like, if you're not from the hood, you don't know how to deal with 
hood shit. So like people were talking back to the pimps and stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Like, people would get propositioned, and, like, people would get in their faces, and I'm like, no, because they're packing and you're not. I am amazed none of us die. They're not going to shoot rock, paper, scissor with you. No, they're going to shoot shoot you. I'm amazed none of us came out of there dead. Yeah, I'm all surprised nobody got hurt. I mean, I'm happy, thank God, but, you know. I, you know, it's, it's, you know, happy, but... I'm amazed. None none of us died. It was it was kind of kind of glorious. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was Genocon. That was story time with with Uncle Nash and Auntie Tara. Oh, uh, back in the day. 